here we are again. It's Sunday. Three. We're going to try to do a podcast. A little after 3 o'clock. A pod blast. I'm exhausted after Famous. all that football yesterday. <laughs> Did they, bar- yeah. Did they barely? Let's talk about. Let's game. talk right. about all. Hey everybody! A, I hope you're watching. There's no one watching. There's not a single person watching. It's Sunday at three oh five p.m. Eastern. They look at it. They look. Yeah. They look at it later on. Only, right. You have to have the Facebook app to watch it live. Are we recording? Well, a lot of people don't have that, like me. I don't have Facebook Ow. live app. Or- that right now. Are we recording? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, we're getting ready to. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Susan's first, and then my microphone. Now, see, my mic just got really dim. Well, it's going to do that for a second. Now, just all right. Sorry about I that. don't forget, you guys have got to respond to what I'm saying, even as I'm saying it. Okay, I have no idea what you're. I, it'll be fine at the beginning, you'll know. All right, thanks to Jim Gossett for the plug. He plugged our little show on his personal. Right. No, Newsmakerline.com. Go see Jim Gossett. Yeah, somebody join. Oh. Uh, so anyway, hello, whoever just Jim joined. Stewart. He's in North Carolina. Hey, Jim. Hey. He's my buddy in North Carolina. Hey, hey Jim. Jim. Jim, if you know anything about uh, Petticoat Junction. Green Beverly, Acres. Beverly Hills. That's what I was going to do. Give us Brilliant. a call. Yeah. Give us a call at yeah. uh, 678 That's right. Five seven Post that, zero. Al. Post the phone no. number. Seven zero. Let me shut up. <laughs> Take two. So, Jim. What? Give us a call in about five minutes. No, say the number because I was talking all over it. Six seven eight <laughs> nine seven zero. Now you're gonna have people calling. And we'll put you. We'll put you. Watch the live here's, video here's the, after the. We'll fact. put you on the pod live. Here's, the, here's the problem. Morning. Are we recording yet? Are we, no, we're live on Facebook. Al, oh, I don't Al, care about that would right you now. type in the phone number? No, no I'll do that. I don't want to confuse them. Sorry. I've going, got two man. hands and ten fingers. All right, good enough. Okay. Let me know when you're recording. I'm going to play. Of course you are. All right, hang on. All right, stand by. There's another person on Facebook. Today's pod blast is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Wait a minute. No, no, not yet. Stand by. Today's pod blast is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Oh, thank you, Susan. Wonderful guys, Susan. Guys, now that you've all had a really good lunch today, thanks to Chance, our good buddy. Chance, good lunch. It, it was delicious, and thanks, Chance. Chance he brought he brought a ton of Chinese China, from Chinese. China Moon was, and Vines. Very, very China good. Moon and Vines. Don't give them a plug because they didn't give you a discount. And we all know. That this past week was Chance's birthday, right, Al? Birthday. Thursday was his birthday. Mm-hmm. He's he, he's eighty-seven. I know no, how old he is. No, no, don't say that. I won't say it, but I That's do know. Birthday, right? Yes. And I know that we always start our pod blast with for today, right? Right. But listen, I'm being serious. We. Uh, talk about something right now right here before we can start today's pod bless there is a big elephant sitting in i hope it doesn't fart no i'm serious now there's a big elephant i would say white elephant that means something else i got two hours of sleep last night well it was because it bothered me so much <laughs> so I, I had i had to say something about it there's a big elephant but very uncomfortable to talk about. So, and and that's the you guys. Don't you guys feel it a little bit in there in the room? A little uncomfortable because you know, uh, chance. Our, anybody? I mean, I I'm mean, completely. well, I'm saying there's a big elephant in the room. We got to talk about it. And now, I know we all agreed when we first started doing. The, we're going to try not to topic to do topics about current affairs and politics and headlines, etc. Oh no! But when, uh, it's, uh-oh. but when it's a big elephant such as this, I I just can't go another second longer with today's pod blast without, shall I say? 
Okay. Okay. On such on such a subject with with such national ramifications as this has, uh, that pretty much escaped me. But you both know exactly. Don't say it. What I'm talking about. No, yes. don't, 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 don't say it. Because I just find it absolutely reprehensible on such a national that I'm totally beside myself. And, and you both should be as well. You really should be. Guys, I quite literally woke up at 2 a.m. this morning and realized this, that this is how we have to begin today. Even, you know, because some things just happen. Have to be addressed and dealt with in a sensible, mature manner, such as this. Now, listen, and you'll know what I'm talking. So far, the evidence is uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. Fartgate. Oh, last I wasn't was too far off then. Anyone. Oh my gosh, it's Fartgate. I mean, can you can you can you believe that? I just can't believe somebody. That's what uh, I, I, Chris I, Matthews called. Oh, oh, I, oh, 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 see, Al oh, just did it. Al oh, just did a fart. Get, 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 chance. chance. Come on. I know you had Chinese. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, you know what? You know. You already stunk up the bathroom. Hey, you know. Hey, Al. Al, do you know? You know what that means? It's pod blast time. Yeah, Let's go. Woo! It you know, stinks I, in here. I, I know. I gotta play. I gotta play that again. Listen to this. It stinks listen, in here. So far, yeah. contradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat. In oh election. man! You can believe that? I've heard no, that no, 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 no. I wouldn't let somebody go go by, go past. Like like. Oh, <laughs> oh excuse me. Pardon. Hey, but when you're full but, of it, you gotta let it rip. But, but <laughs> all, I, all I know is, if you look at the video, he paused. His body lifted slightly, and he ripped a big one. He did. Oh, see, but was it him or was it Chris Matthews? I, I, I mean, I, no, I think it was. I, I think it was uh, him. Yeah. I think. Matter of fact, I, I don't even. It, what, Eric uh, Swalwell. Yes, his name. that's correct. Yes, and he was going to run for president, but he can't because he, you know, did that. But here's what a people saying about this, guys. One person says, "I'm glad America can unite over flagellants." It needs to have a sponsor like Gas X. You know, like NASCAR true. cars have all the endorsements. Yeah, all over. that's he true. Should, on his suit, he should have a little lapel pin. The, the FBI have has infrared evidence. See, it's right here. Infrared evidence <laughs> that it was actually him. You know, and there's also a hack called Fartgate that's out there for crying out loud. Guys, we need a flagellants committee to investigate the intelligence committee. Right on. By the way, right you're listening on. to the Nostalgic Pod Blast. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. This is we never said Tom what Williams, we were doing. Al Hardy is behind the microphone and man in the controls, and I'm Chance Bartels, Chance Fartels for today. That's right. Chance Chance uh, Fartels. There it is right there. I'm sorry. But what are we talking about? I really... But but, but I, had, wait, I, guess I turned well, the keys over to Tom today. Well, that's true. You probably, sh you probably shouldn't have done that because that this... Goes to show. He's just talking about gas. How that full is. of crap Washington and he is. Oh yeah, there it is. So it kind of sums up the whole democratic impeachment oh, no, wait, process. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's oh, not talk too oh, much about it. Oh, Eric, Eric and his new. That's it, Eric Fartwell. And, 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 and his new Green Deal. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Hey, it was funny. I was, just, Sorry. I was just making a, a, a jest about this guy's poor unfortunate uh, farting on the air. And, <laughs> as, as everyone, in the we got to talk about it too because it's a big thing. If you know what I mean? It's viral. It, it, yeah, yeah. There it is. Like diarrhea. Yeah. All right. So now it's getting ridiculous, <laughs> and people are turning us off because of the, you know, the, the, that. Chance, are you okay? Nothing wrong. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm no, uh, what? Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> All right. You have to remember, Tom only got two hours of sleep. That's so. right. I just had a cleanse. He's I'm just good. Good. That's right. I, I only had two hours of sleep last night. And uh, that's. And, and I was, you're a little loopy. It was, it was on my mind and on my brain. Hey, but today, tell us what we're going to talk about, Chance. Go ahead. Well, this is your baby. This is not one of my four topics. Me. But Chance is always over uh, there. Just like, 
Why don't you tell us how we're talking about? We're talking about rural comedies. Rural. Rural. R-U-R-A-L. That's not like Tom Brokaw. Redneck comedy that we love. Yeah, redneck comedy. Rural comedies. And we're talking about the great, you know, people don't talk about him anymore, obviously, because it's a long time ago. Paul Hennig. Get yes, all those shows. He oh, he sure was a great magician. Did, did you little no, rainbow? No, no, and, that's Mark. No, oh, Mark, that was uh, Doug Henning. Doug I think Henning, you're yeah. right. He wanted to be a singer. He didn't want to be a producer. He started out to be a singer. Well, do we have? Did you know that music we could play? I Not don't this know. Minute. Well, the yeah, but but Paul, I, I was just going to give a little bit, just, just a teeny tiny background on Paul Henning. You know, he was he was an American producer and a screenwriter. And he was most famous for his uh, television sitcoms. You know, he was born in Independence, Missouri. Yes, he was in 1911. He passed, he, Truman, he, passed, he passed away in 95, I believe. Can I, just, can I just chime in one quick thing about Independence, Missouri? Sure. Harriet Truman was born there. I will never forget this. On David Letterman's show, they were interviewing uh, Brian Williams. Right. And Brian Williams was talking about... Letterman asks, like, who's one of your favorite presidents? And he goes, well, it would have to be Harry S. Truman, born in St. Louis, Missouri. And I thought, no, you idiot. Independence, Missouri, which is the capital. Anyway, back yeah, over to yeah. Tom. Yeah, but, yeah. Just a funny course. memory I of remember. Course. That is, that is funny. I'm, I'm... Well, of course. St. Louis, Missouri, and it was completely incorrect. Well, well okay. Well, tell, well, what was the first show he created? Well, we the, all know. Well, the, well, the first show was the Beverly Hills. That was the first show, and he was also crucial in developing, as you said a little while ago, the rural comedies Petticoat Junction. Spinoff. Which was a spinoff, and that went from 63 to 70. Did you mention Beverly Hibbley started in 62? No, I, I, hadn't okay. got there. I hadn't got there yet. And then the one that we all, I'm, I'm sure everyone listening has heard, Green Acres. Da, 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 We're going to play da, the themes. We got them uh, all ready course, to go. Of course we are. But we'll Billy's in a bit. Yeah, the pilot version of the theme, which is a variation, and I think it's kind of cool because I've never it, heard it. It is a cool variation. But first, My bad. Let me set it up. With Shut up, bad. Chance. Now he, now he was. Uh, remember, he he was a television writer. And where was he born? Now, Independence, Missouri. Which, You're listening. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure you were Very still paying good, attention Al. over there. I told you that. <laughs> but he, he, you know, he started as a. Uh, uh, singing he was a singer uh but he abandoned that and eventually writing for fibber mcgee i'll mention and that molly uh, and the george burns gracie allen show now, these were radio shows back then so that's how he started and then I later, take that back he died in 2005 yeah and then later uh television series such as the dennis day show the real mccoys andy griffith i mean he's been he's been that man had been around the block more than once the bob cummings show al he did that as well and um uh, the Ray Bolger show shows that you probably he, he actually met Harry Harry S Truman too. Well, oh, sure he did. Yeah, why wouldn't he? That time sixty four, uh, but in sixty two, that's when he created the CBS series, the Beverly Hillbillies. Now, the reality of the Pod Blast is there's so many clips, there's so many amazing, amazing moments with the cast, Buddy Epson, Max Bear who was uh, the son of the famous uh, boxer Max Baer. Uh, and, uh, Max Baer is the only one still he, living Yes, and he from is, the series. He is the only Jethro. one still Jethro. Jethro Bodine. And uh, Irene Ryan had a, a, a big film career before she became great. She was actually quite an attractive young lady. That's what you I know, she looked. A lot younger than they made her look oh, she, old, oh, that, and she was really yeah. a much That's younger back yeah, in the yeah, '62. Really yeah. of course, she was be, glamorous. On like Password with Alan Ludden in the beginning, yeah, and that's out there on YouTube. I'm sure it's on uh, Buzzer. Every the yeah, old Password, and you'll see the episode she was in. But, yeah, of course. But yeah, she was a she had a completely different look for Beverly Hillbillies, and they aged her kind of like they did with Estelle Getty on the Golden Girls in the '80s. Oh yeah, exactly. But but the Beverly but the Beverly Hillbillies had a cast of characters uh, on it, uh, uh, the, from Milburn Drysdale, Jane Hathaway, from Jane Hathaway, and I'm using their uh, their their stage names, so to speak, their TV the show names. names. Because if I told you their real names, you probably wouldn't uh, uh, you probably wouldn't recognize them. At least some of you would not. But I 
And Donna Douglas, there was. Uh, she, she was from, the girl she next was from door. Georgia, wasn't she originally? Yeah. North yeah. Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. But folks, your home state. Yeah. Dodge Raymond, Country. <laughs> yeah. Raymond, Raymond Bailey played Milburn Drives. Now, see if I'd have said Raymond Bailey and Nancy Culp, somebody said, well, who are they? Was uh, Jane Hathaway. What was the woman Raymond that played uh, his wife? She was funny because she just didn't get it. She hated. No, whatever, you no know. of course she. No, of she, course she. Uh, her name no. was. She hated the Beverly Hills or the characters. Oh, you know what? It, it, I thought I had everyone's name here, and I, and I don't have her name. Funny thing about that, she's not. Holy smokes, guys! She's Donna Duck's born in Pride, Louisiana. Yeah. So we I was wrong, wrong, not I North Carolina. Wrong. Harriet, get this. That's why you don't know her. Harriet E. McGibbon. McGibbons? <laughs> Who the Gibbon. hell is that? Who she, he, she went, played Dry, uh, Dry Mr. Drysdale's Dry wife. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she was too horny. Right, the yeah, banker. Yeah. Okay. Cousin Pearl, who was Jeff Rose. And I'm talking about the TV show, not in real life. Uh, that was Jeff Rose's mom. Now, what, I can't even pronounce her name. Benedict. She was the voice of one of the Flintstones yes, characters. She was. Which one was she? Was she Fred? No. Was she Barney? <laughs> Who was she? Not Wilma, the other one. Betty Ruffle. Betty, yeah. Voice yeah, of Betty. That's yeah. what you're trying to think of. I mean, listen, there there were all kinds of people on this show. Frank Caddy, again, cross they did crossover episodes like crazy with Petticoat Junction, except Frank Caddy, who played Sam Drucker. Um, now here's the funny thing, Al. You'll you'll like this. The announcer for those shows, who was it? It was, an, it was an announcer named Bill Baldwin. The Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, yeah. and he did yeah. a lot of announcing back then. But he did it, he did it for all the shows uh, at that time period back then. Uh, for um, Lester Flat, Earl Scruggs. I mean, it, the, the list. Listen, I'm sitting here looking at the list, and the list is amazing of all on that show. Louis Nye, Fred Clark, Alan Reed Jr., who was Fred Flintstone. He was on the show because he played. Louis Nye was a funny man. Oh, he was amazing. He was hilarious. Of course, he was Zombo on uh, the Munsters, and that's one of the most memorable uh, episodes of the Munsters. Um, but, the, but, buddy, the, uh, the Al, the list goes on and on and on. Um, of, 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 it's a who's who. Now, some of these people that I'm looking through. I mean, Charlie Ruggles was on the show. Roy Clark was on the show playing his uh, guitar banjo. Um, and so Edgar Buchanan was on it. He, of course, he played Uncle Joe Carson. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm sitting here. I'm still scrolling, and the list keeps going. That's a great and series. Going, I mean, it, 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 I, I love the Creature was on the show for crying out loud. Yeah. Was on the show. So my point being, there's so many so shows. Would just take forever to go through them all. So what were the gonna, total so episodes? Touch, what was the total? Well, we're going to we're going to touch on that in, in just a moment. But there yeah. was there there was the show, 1962 to 1971. That's a long that run. That was a long run. Now there was a, a oh gosh, it was uh, 274 episodes. Woo! We got to hear and, the theme, and, man. And that's and that's all. Anyway, I've got so by the way, yeah. for our Facebook Live audience, I just posted as Al Hardy the phone number to call in if you'd like to join the conversation. Yeah, if you on want to Sunday for an so hour, so be, be, don't call be, that number out. Be after. aware, Tom, that your phone may ring. So. Well, I doubt it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's listen to episode. Which you don't really get to hear too much because they've, and in a lot of cases, they if you are watching reruns, they'll either not run this episode for some reason. Or it's so, so different from the regular series, or they'll run a repackaged version of it, and then they've colorized some places. So, so this is this is we're going to play a little bit of a chunk here. We're not going to play the whole one because the whole episode is like twenty four minutes. But this is worth looking uh, for on uh, YouTube. It's the Beverly Hillbillies episode one is what they're calling it. This has a different, a slightly different theme song, has a different intro. And it kind of starts in the future, and then it backtracks to where Jed uh, was shooting for some food. Now here it comes, and it's it's pretty pretty interesting. And we'll chime in uh, here in just a few moments. Here it is. This is Beverly Hills, and here come the Beverly Hillbillies. 
different thing. It's a standard uh, driving shot that you've seen. Donna Douglas and Max Payne. Shows him driving down the road in Beverly Hills. Here we go. Yeah, come on. Hey, boy. I'll stay, boy. In Beverly Hills? Whoa, wait a minute. How could a bunch of hillbillies possibly buy a mansion like this? Let's take them back to their home and see how this. Oh, back to the cabin. Jed, you got to do something about that young and the urine. How'd that happen? Fighting with a bobcat. Get hurt? I reckon so. It went limping off on three legs. <laughs> I swear I don't know what I'm going to do about that girl. <laughs> well, the first thing to do is to get her into a dress. She's getting too big to be wearing man's doves. Looky here. She's done popped the buttons off of her shirt again. Well, honey, make carries yourself proud with the shoulders thrown back. So anyway, they they they're kind of recanting as opposed to the theme song where you see Jed shooting at some food up through the ground. I don't think the first episode is even in syndication. I I don't know. The, and here's the thing: I don't own the box set, so I really uh, can't say one way or the other whether it is. I've never seen it. I mean, I know a lot about classic and current television. And I've never seen the first Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, there you go. There you go. So that, it, it's probably in a, you know, I bought a DVD set years ago, but the, uh, they replaced the music in it. Where he strikes yeah, oil. I want to see that. You've seen the opening yeah. credits, yeah. but I want to see the whole thing. So I'll buy the that's DVD. The, yeah, that's the good one. I like yeah. that. And by the way, I like to own my material. I'm not a big streamer, you know, and now with the streaming I like the physical service copy. wars and yeah. stuff, it's all yeah. starting to hit the fan. Well, I own them. I mean, I've, I've transferred. Hard drive, so don't oh, 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 oh. no, no, no. I encourage all of our listeners to go to Amazon or better yet, half price books or other buy or rent some of these DVDs. And well, you know, Christmas is to, coming, Jan, and you can you could buy us a copy on a yeah, DVD. And thanks to CBS Paramount, the license holder, Paramount. Oh, just Paramount, it's Paramount, not CBS Paramount, Paramount anymore. It's CBS Paramount, yeah, CBS so Paramount. CBS is Sony now. And, and they're all they're so, all buying each other out. I mean, Dis look at Disney. But anyway, that's another story. That's another subject. Well, I'm going to buy season one for sure. Yeah, and season, and season one, Gomer Powell, USMC, best season. After that, when they went color, forget it. That, uh, to me, it just went... Like Andy Griffith. Just went color, color, excuse me. Uh, yeah, there were some good episodes. I don't, I don't debate that. But the... What am I hearing? Okay, uh, was, were the really good ones? The black, the black and white ones were the really good ones. These shows you 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 come across, it seems like the black and white versions. The writing and Lost better. in Space, the yeah. black and white. Bewitched, the first season it was black and white. It was great, you know. So here's what. And anyway, so yeah, but being color has nothing to do with the writing. But, but no, but the writers change over the years. That's right. And okay, but they don't change because the show is in color. Uh, you're not you're not catching what I'm trying. To say. Saying that once the show progresses and the writers either move on or they're not meeting their contract, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then they get new writers. Then the show just gets. But it's very rare. If you actually look at the credits on shows, they change writers all the time. They, they don't just, ever stay but, the same. But, they change writers that maintain quality, like Seinfeld. Yeah, as an example, that's exactly. one that actually bucked the trend. He's Tom's absolutely. Although right. that last show pretty sucked, pretty much. Sucked. But that was back in the '60s, you know, in the '60s yeah. and '70s, and. But but the, the shows, Norman Lear shows didn't really lose their. Age. No, but the shows as they progressed in years, as they got uh, more and more years behind them, uh, it, it got stale. Basically, I guess it was just say that. I'll just say the shows got stale, whether they were color or not, they got stale. I mean, I would no more watch a color Gomer Powell than a not waste my time. You know what really it, got bad when it went color was Andy Griffith. Well, well yeah. I said that out. Well, that yeah, was well, yeah. just and terrible. That's what, and that's what chance. And how about 
did say that? Yes, he did say that. So you're not listening. That was, uh, say, I'm actually working over here. <laughs> well, you, you're not listening because. Did you, you guys ever like Gilligan's Island? I'm not going to say much well, yeah. to divert the topic. but Yeah, Gilligan's Island, Gilligan's Island was good, but it got played to death. It got overplayed. See, they did the dream yeah, sequence episode too much. And, and and the cool thing is, you know, like like when he did the Dracula one with, with Gilligan, he he went home with the kids. <laughs> kind of like Dick York did with yeah. the ears that we talked well, about. Talked yeah, about exactly. Night. That's what Chris York was, was saying. Yeah, that, the son uh, of Dick York. Soundbite that we... And the original, the original theme song of the Beverly Hillbillies, the one you're going to be familiar with, sounds like this. Come and listen to the poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food and up through the ground from a boat. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. Jed, move away from there. Said California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills. Women Foods Movie Stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. And there it is. I love that. <laughs> Lester Flan, Earl Scruggs. Yeah. Yeah, man. I love that. This is a good jam. For the dueling banjos, right? In Deliverance. You know, that was like the original Battle of the Banjos. Oh, sure. Good sure. music. Well, sure. Way before that. It, it was great stuff. And even all the... Squeal like a pig! Yeah. All, that's, that's, I didn't care for that much. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story. Uh, uh, it was... Poor Ned Beatty. He never wanted to talk about it after that when a fan would mention I don't blame it. it. Uh, you blame him? Uh, now, Paul Henning also wrote, wrote the theme. The did theme? You not, did you to, not know that? Yeah. I did, but I think he that's cool. He that, wrote, that's you know, he wrote the very words. Rarely. Yeah, he like wrote John the words. Carpenter did with Halloween, yeah. the movie. Well, remember, he was a... Uh, the director. He, he was he was a, um, a, a lyricist or a writer. Like Jackie Let, Gleason. Yeah. Lester Flatt, Earl Scruggs, and it was sung by a guy named Jerry Scoggins. I hope I'm saying That's that. good to know. Scoggins. I didn't know that. Yeah. Jerry Scoggins uh, sung the song. Because everybody said, oh, Lester Flatt, Earl Scruggs. They said, no. Oh, no. They actually sang the, the Ballad of Jed Clampett. Uh, on the show, which is which is basically the theme song, except they they words are it was, it was a great. I'll I'll look for that. And we'll play that a little bit of that because that's actually quite a good song. And they sang that, uh, and Jeb and Granny were sitting there dancing to it. It was it was a real, it was a real hoot, as they say, real hoot. Beverly Hillbillies was a fun show, well written show. Might have harmed the reputation of the Southerner in the eyes well, of the Northerner and the West Coast. We were all were deemed people that live in the side. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I, I, well, I think fun shows it, like Hee Haw. Perception is everything. Well, Hee Haw was yeah. a direct spinoff, basically. And he Hee Haw was very It also popular. made Southerners seem, and Dukes of Hazard shows like, anyway. Yeah, but you got to laugh at yourself. I mean, you know. Yeah, but you see many Yankee shows poking fun at the way Yankees speak or think or talk. I don't know. I, I nice because all the northerners moving down here thank you that's what i was about to say and, and try Florida. And, and try to change our politics hey, hey, well, hey. Yeah. well there you go makes me nervous go. well you know you know uh back around that same time jimmy oh, d al J <laughs> paul lynn um who can do paul lynn uh um, sure Goss jim gossett can i know it will be a i won't announce it this year no don't but, no so anyway, uh, and around the same time, there was another really popular show, a network show, a variety show. You, you had the Andy Williams shows. You had the Como. Hollywood Palace shows, we talked about. In Hollywood Palace. Yeah, Hollywood Palace. You had, a, you had a ton of variety shows. Country variety show that was very, very, very popular. It was the Jimmy Dean. Jimmy Dean show. Oh yeah, the and you know they're guy. using they're using his voice now in the new commercials. Oh, yeah. Well, of course they are. Yeah. And he's yeah. gone. He's deceased. He's been dead for years. Yeah, he's been dead for. A few he years. could sing, boy. Yeah, he could. Big sing. John. He could sing. Well, let's let's listen to this clip now. Here is here is I mentioned this is cool. Flat and, about to Flat and Scruggs, the Ballad of Jed Clampett, and they're performing it live. And let's not talk during the. Clip. <laughs> they're performing it live. Uh, Jimmy Dean show. 
in the past decade was preceded by some music that I think had a great the success of the show. It was a thing called the Ballad of Jed Clampett and the guys that did it and also had a big record on it, a lesson. First thing you know, Jed's a millionaire. And folks said, Jed, move away from there. They're waving by. <laughs> California is a place you ought to be. So I loaded Inference. up the truck and the boat. Hold up the hands. He was that in swimming. <laughs> now, wave to the camera. All right, so anyway, that, that's how it sounded live. Now, Lester Flat to me, uh, Lester Fat sound just as good as Jerry Scroggins. Sounded the same. I thought it was the no, same. No, not dude. the same. No, it's not I the know. same guy. They almost sound alike. All right, listen to this. This was over the credits. He'll come back in. Let's play. There it is. There it is. Again, that's from the, now, that's from the uh, Jimmy Dean show. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't kill it. Quickly. Remember that? Though? I loved at the end. You'd have Don Douglas. This has been a film. And then on Green Acres, it was uh, 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 um, Gabor. Gabor, yeah. This has been a Which, film with presentation, darling. I can't do it. <laughs> So that was that was a great part. That was a great part about uh, those shows that because the, they took chances with it. And oh, no pun intended. Oh, actually, actually. Uh, so and and they did stuff like that on the shows that were just outrageous. I mean, uh, uh, the stuff that Jethro would, say, especially the stuff. Oh, we're going to play this later. Uh, Jaja would say <laughs> some of the crazy crap she would come up with. Again, writing, but then CBS. We're starting to be known as the Country Pumpkin Network, and they didn't like that. Well, Beverly, no, wait a minute, Billy, wait a minute. Before they were, but, but they had well, this Hee Haw on well, CBS. Well, that's true. That that came, that you know, came, that came that later, came later, way after the Beverly Hill. But that that was syndicated. No, that when it first came on, it was live. It was on CBS Network. I, I think no. Well, let's look on our phone. Well, well, it was it was on the C no, 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 no. It was on the CBS network for a couple of years anyway, right, and so then quote, it went into syndication. Out, quote out, say, and he said that. And, but you and, haven't mentioned yet, Tom, that the Beverly Hillbillies was the number one network show. It debuted it strong and stayed number one yes, for many years. Yes, it really did. Yes, it really did. It was the show. And and it, and it, you know there you know not every single show was good, but um, it, it was good. As I said earlier, even as it can progressed in years, it was starting to get a little stale. Right, right. And you could tell that the characters, just like with any series. I've got obviously. a 1964 Amazing Spider-Man comic book where Aunt May is talking to Peter Parker. She goes, it's almost time to watch the Beverly See? See? And, and then when they reprinted the issue years later, they changed it to Dukes of Hazard. Ah. So when they reprinted it 20 years later in 1982. A hee haw. It debuted on the CBS network June 15th, 1969. How long did it last? It was Amazing Spider Man Annual uh, 1. Anyway. 20. No, no, no. Well, it, no, was, no, it, was, no, it was 23 no. seasons, but it was on the network. Wait, wait. Uh, 23 seasons? No. That's what you just no. said. No. Includes the syndication. Oh, oh. so you didn't say that. Yeah. You made it sound like CBS had it for 23 it, seasons. It, it's no, one of those didn't. shows. It's never been off the air. It's oh, thanks to. Run it endlessly well, along with well, Genie, and, well, Genie and Bewitch. Yeah, we're and, talking about Beverly Hillbillies. I know. Not, not he Okay. I, no, we're talking about Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. 
Oh, well, I, see, I get so excited. You were talking about not. I wasn't. Listening. No, he haw. You're talking about he haw. Twenty three seasons, including syndication. Right, right. But I, it, it, I thought you were talking about. It was on Slap CBS from 1969 to 1971, and then it went into syndication after that. But I meant, yes, Beverly Hills. I touched you. Sorry, Tom. I know you don't like that. <laughs> uh, I don't care. How this goes. You touched me. I'm just kidding. But but the, th the thing is, uh, were really, really, really strong shows from back then. Even even when it went color, you know, it, the Beverly Hillbillies had good shows even in color. Even My Three Sons. Even when they went color, remember, remember how it used to start. Hi, I'm networks. Fred McMurray. Yes, and thanks yeah. for watching. No, uh, it... Welcome, yeah, or something like that. Hi, I'm Fred. I'm McMurray. Fred McMurray. Welcome to our show. Yeah, see, oh, that's the worst. I wouldn't even try. I heard he show. wasn't a nice man. Well, I'm right below John Candy. Well, Jim Gossett of Jim Gossett Comedy has a story about meeting Fred McMurray on a golf course, and hopefully one day he'll tell that story. But. That's oh, there you go. Time. I just heard he was a real dick. There you go. Beverly Hillbillies, unedited Christmas, and Hooterville. Well, well uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. About we, we, were talking about, we, we were talking about that earlier. You know, he, he was a movie star. He did double and indemnity and things. And just this is pretty well known. But on My Three Sons, you know, he would shoot his whole season at the beginning of the season. They would edit in dialogue into the episodes where they filmed the rest of the cast. Because he, he wasn't available. He was wanting to maintain a movie career. And so, excuse me. Wow. He, he would shoot season at the very beginning like in the course of a couple weeks he played a real jerk in the movie the apartment with jack i've Lemon. never seen it one's boss Wait, and who, he, who did who did fred mcmurray when oh, was yeah. it released the do you apartment? remember the, do you remember the in, decade in the, the decade six, in the 60s okay but you know he was uh, jack Lemon's boss is you know and then he but he had a mistress well played by, played by shirley mcclain and i think he wore a hairpiece and he decided. wanted Who's to like a piece. Well, so did, so did Bing Crosby and so did William John Shatner, Lane. even back in Star Trek. But let, you know, anyway. we, we talked about some of the characters. Let's talk about Jim. a clip from 1962, oh, season good. one, episode three, where Jethro. <laughs> I love fast women. Uncle Jeff, now you're going to be keeping. Is there any questions you'd like to ask me? What kind of question? <laughs> no, about girls. What do you know about girls? They softer than boys. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Speaking. Shorter and rounder. Yeah. And the hair's longer and it smells sweet when you snuggles up to them. <laughs> Snuggling, have you? I've done more than that. Oh! You better tell me about it. Who was she? Prettiest girl in the hill. Bradshaw. <laughs> My old Vernon's girl. <laughs> I hear it tell she's kind of... Is she ever... Uncle Jed, I was walking past the cap, and Big Mouth, she calls out... She says, howdy, Jethro. She says, My ma's just made a big batch of cookies. Come on in and have some. And I says, sure your ma won't mind? She says, ma's gone, and so's pa. Who? I'm here all alone. Well, Uncle Jed, I was in that house before you could wink an eye. Can't say they're blaming. <laughs> no sooner was I inside, the big ma, she puts a music record on the phonograph machine and commences to sashaying around. Commences. And turn. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> she says, put your arms around me, Jethro, and I'll teach you the two-step. What'd you say? I says, listen, Big Mouth, I says, here we are all alone. Your ma and your pa think that I'm going to waste my time dancing? I says, not me, sister. Bring on them cookies. <laughs> Let's see the looks Jed's giving him. What'd she say? Well, Jed, you and Jethro can start digging the well. Over some pumps. That's fine, <laughs> Granny. We'll get right to it. <laughs> what that Brad? Them cookies. Well, she just held up them cookies like this here. Kind of blinked her eyes at me and said, Jethro, we sweeter. These here cookies are my lips. Ooh. Ooh. Well, Uncle Jess, right then and there is when Ooh. I passed. 
I grabbed them two cookies, and it took me two miles to outrun that. <laughs> so anyway, you know, Jethro always wore a belt. It was a belt. He had a rope yeah, for a belt. Rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that funny. That was fun. That was He'd probably use that to swing across the lake. You know, they'd put it up in the tree and and swing. The inner tube around it or oh, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he produced one of my favorite movies. Redneck stuff. Ode to Billy Joe. Yeah. Well, he also, didn't he also do Making? Yeah. yeah. That, that was a big hit for him as well. But then he kind of dropped off and, yeah. did, and did other things in life. He, he was actually on the. He sold cars. He made a lot of money selling cars. Yeah. But he, he was on Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal podcast. And, uh, and, uh, he, Tales of him was real bitter, and he didn't want to be associated. He wants with to Jeff distance Rowe himself or, from the character. But he was okay talking. How old is he him. now? Oh gosh, he's he's got to be in his uh, early eighties. I'll find out. Yeah, late seventies, okay. early eighties is, is my guess. I'm sure that Chance should have already had that pulled up, but he doesn't. I didn't know what our topic would be today, so I'm ill prepared. But, uh, yeah, but but you know, Max Baird Jr. But you know, even even though. Um, uh, he this, is 81 years young. Wow. There you go. And he still looks pretty good. Born I mean, December 4th, yeah. 1937. So he's fixing to turn 82. Yeah, shoot, man. Shut me. Oakland, California. So he wasn't no country boy at all. Yeah, shoot, yeah. Girl. He's a California dude. Yeah, yeah. But he, he you know, he's done Six a lot. Six foot four inches he, tall. Yeah. He's, he's probably shrunk since then, he's, though. He's a big old boy. Yeah, I'm sure he's shrunk a little bit. He has some good ones, just like everybody in the world. Man. He was also can, can in the I, he was also in the adult film business for. Oh, while. brother, I, I didn't need to know that. Just, <laughs> I guess. So well, that's Stallone knows. did some soft. Uh, well, who knows? Blue uh, who knows? junk uh, when he's getting started uh, to pay the bills. But uh, can we talk about Don? I want to say this was her big starring vehicle. She actually could say lines and speak because when she was on the Twilight Zone, the debut of the Beverly Hillbillies. In the year 1960, season two, there was an episode, Eye of the Beholder. She recently passed away, didn't she? Correct. She Older, all right? It's the episode where there's a woman in bandages in the hospital, and they dubbed over her voice. She's like, when will you take the bandages? And then they take the bandages off one by one, and you see she's beautiful. And they, they think, you know, they set up They think she's hideous. ugly. Yes. So everybody they, else. The orderly, the nurse, they're all these pig-like aliens. And it's a society about conformity, and everyone must look alike. And, and well, how did she like good, working with the Beverly Hillbillies? She liked the show, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she, she, because even in her later years, you look up a picture of Donna. It looks like Ellie Mae. I mean, she has the hair, and she kept it blonde, and everything. She really did. She tried to hang up, on up too, up really, until the end. She wore a wig. And she tried to she keep tried that persona. To look young, couldn't quite pull it off, but she was cute. You know what I mean? Like. She kept stayed in character, at least in public, as the, Ellie May. Let's listen to her as Ellie. She, oh, she, she got involved in the court, so by the way. We'll, we'll talk about that. Her, like she, she was very active going out likeness. True. Anyway. True. Did let's, you know about that? Yeah. Let's, right. let's listen to a little okay. bit what Ellie May sounded like. This is a tribute video that uh, someone has, has done. Here's Duke. <laughs> Pretty soon me and you's going to take a nice long walk outside. Give me the bone, Granny. I'll find him. <laughs> Don't you worry, Duke. We'll get out of here. Rusty, now that you and Skippy's such good friends, I bet you you'd like it fine if you could swim, too. There ain't no reason that cats can't swim just as good as dogs. You two's got to learn to get along together. I love that you kind of make up. I've got a cat that's swim. Debutante type music. Wonderful. Yes. You'd rather swim than eat fish. Ah, diggity dog, I'm gonna like courting and sparking. It's only the court. Yeah. That light Paul. Here she is, Mr. Drysdale. My lips long to taste your Louis Nye. <laughs> she hit him and flipped him over. Oh. Hey, why did you throw him? That rascal. So anyway, that's that's that was Ellie Mae, what she sounded like, and oh, was she, and she she also um, was in the Elvis Presley movie. Which one? Which one? Al? I want to say Clam, Clam Bay. Johnny. Oh, I was I was the only one she was in that I know of. Frankie and Johnny. 
And she was actually pretty good in that movie, although the movie, movie itself, I don't Good. But it had Elvis. And I read Elvis exactly. was after her, and she was a good girl. Like, she was a virgin for a long time. The story is, well, let me pull something you know, up. You know, as, as we move along, we, really, we need to talk about the main character. Buddy Epson. Buddy Epson. Mm-hmm. Buddy Epson. Tell us a little bit about Buddy Epson there. Well, he, wow. was, uh, he was a terrific dancer. You know, he made a, a wonderful movie with Shirley Temple. You know what the name of the movie was? It was called... Let's play a little bit of it. Well, oh, oh, that's not it. That's the... well. Uh, can I? Why you? Yeah. Pull- yeah. Let's see. Did you know she was a gospel singer, yes. an inspirational speaker, an Christian... author of books for children's and adults? on the show. Her character had all those animals that you just played. Uh, she became a real estate agent following her acting career. I digress. I just let's get back to Buddy Ebsen, the star of the show, played Jed. Yes. And he, and he played with Shirley Temple. And here's, here's a little clip of uh, their little routine together. I won't start. I'm here. Next Friday night, you're all invited. That's to not Buddy Epson. From eight to five. <laughs> all the Shirley Temple. All the people still alive are having a ball. It's some affair, they'll all be there from the herring to the whale. They'll turn out to shake a scale. Come along and follow me to the bottom of the sea. In the jamboree and the codfish roll. Lobsters dancing in a row. Buffalo, Jolly fish way to and fro at the codfish frog. Then the eels, you and Irish. All right, so anyway, they're dancing and all this sort of stuff in the background. Uh, uh, Sorry. Let me jump in. His his name was actually Frank. When you're done, his name was Frank Epson. And that was from what movie? You remember Captain January? Come on, Captain January, nineteen thirty-six. Wow, that's and wow, later, a long time ago. Yeah. No, and later he started well, Barnaby Jones, which I didn't care for. Too and much. I was going to talk well, about that, yeah. And well, right after Beverly Hill, and that show lasted many years. Yes, but did, did you know Lee Merriweather, the Buddy Epson, was the original Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz? I did he know that. Cast. I, yeah, makeup caused him very much distress. It did not agree with him. And, you know what political party he was associated with? I, uh, I don't care. Say it. Republican. Okay. No, well, there you go. We're going to play that Swalwell up again. No. He could do you that know, again. Uh, let me just correct something real quick. Don, I was wrong about that. I said that Elvis wanted to get with her. She, she was married. Uh, Robert M. Leeds, director of Beverly Hillbillies in 1980. Before that, she married her first husband, Roland. Bourgeois Jr. in 49, she had her only child, Danny, in 1954. Legal stuff. Check this out. On June 10th, 1993, Douglas and her partner, Kurt Wilson, and Associated Arts Entertainment, Inc., filed a $200 million lawsuit against Disney, Whoopi Goldberg, Bette Midler, their production companies, and creative artists agency claiming that Sister Act was plagiarized from a book, A Nun in the Closet, owned by the partners Douglas and Wilson, claimed that in 1985 they had developed a screenplay from that book. There were more than 100 similarities and plagiarisms between the movie, book, screenplay. So let's see if they settled. Sister Act was actually a funny movie. This was declined a $1 million offer to settle the case, and the judge found in favor of Walt Disney Pictures. So they should have taken. Yeah, and uh, you know what movie, uh, first movie Buddy Epson was ever in? Tell us how. Broadway Melody of 19. 19- I had that on film at one time. I and still, it, I still say that. If you're the Facebook Live people, we are the Nostalgic Pod Blaster. 678 570 0970. That's 678 570 0970. And uh, we're going to have a couple special guests calling in yeah, later I, today, including. Someone you know who is an expert in the Henning shows. Well, here's the funny thing. He hasn't called, so I'm, I'm going to give him a... Epson was also <laughs> no, in no, uh, no. Walt Just Disney's David. 
Buddy Epson was in Walt Disney's Davy Crockett series. Yes, too. he was. Yes, he was. He he played along with. That was a great. Uh, let's see, was it David Crockett and the River Rats or something like that? Uh, um, who who was who was? Uh, uh, he, just, now he just died a couple of years ago. Come on, come on, Al. Come on, dig it out, dig it out of your. Come on, he played David Crockett. He also played Daniel Boone. Fast Keep... Parker. Thank you. <laughs> Ta-da. Uh, it was a Daniel Boone that gave it away, wasn't it? <laughs> but uh, Buddy Epson was was also very good. Let's listen to what... Uh, you know where Buddy Epson was from? Uh, no, Jer- where? Tell us. Orlando, Florida. To Disney World. Of course he, he probably did. did. Let's, let's uh, listen to Billy Hill, uh, the Beverly Hillbilly special with Buddy Epson. Let's listen to just a little bit of that. Uh, his character. Hi, I'm Buddy Epson. For nine years... I would Jed clamp it on the Beverly Hillbillies. And we're going to look back at some of the memorable shows we did, including my favorite. The day after the show premiered, the Beverly Hillbillies were the talk of America. It It wasn't long before we had climbed to number one in the ratings, and with 60 million people tuning in every Wednesday night to see how Jed, Granny, Ellie, and Jethro... We're coping with the culture shock. People loved Beverly Hillbillies because it was a happy show about happy people. Air, dramatic shows like uh, The Defenders and Naked City were looking at serious problems, but people needed. That's what we gave them week after week. We stayed near the top of the ratings for our entire nine year run. The series, writer producer Paul Henning who had been around since the early days of television and had been a script writer for the George Burns and Gracie I said that earlier. After his success with the Beverly Hillbillies, no, he spun off two other rural comedies, Medical Junction and Green Acres. He inspired so many imitations that soon the TV schedule was filled with country sitcoms. Wait, we should just let Buddy... Keep it going, this is great! Yeah, yeah. yeah. please! <laughs> When Henning developed the Beverly Hillbillies, he assembled a strong cast of veterans and new to life. Ellie May was played by Donna Douglas, who'd worked as a model and actress. Like her character, a tomboy who blossomed into a beautiful young woman. She even had a southern background, born and raised in Louisiana. There you go. In fact, her accent she once fought to get rid of. To play Jethro, Henning cast Max Bear Jr., a boxing champion. The young man who wanted to be a boxer himself. We pretty much said all this. Keep it going. <laughs> Until his father had a problem. He wasn't very good at it. Fortunately, he had done some acting in college, and after graduating, he started. One of the most popular cast members was Irene Ryan, who yeah, played go. Granny. She won an amateur contest at the age of 11. Irene began as a chorus girl and worked her way up to headlines. And she did work in radio and television. So anyway. Well, uh, so, what about Nancy Culp? You know you well, know what happened to her, don't you? No, I didn't yeah, know. She, she, but, drowned, but she, she drowned in Ricky Lake. Jane Hathaway. But, but she she drowned in old. Ricky Lake. But she was rather, but she right, was rather old. Old joke, sorry. That's an old joke. I know what you're talking about. I just fell flat. Pratzel! You shouldn't do that. Bring the fart sounds. Ms. Hathaway was her character, the secretary. Yes, but she also played in a lot of 60s movies as well, along with Tony Randall. Uh, She was in a lot of of character roles back then, as all the actors back then were were doing. 60s, during the Doris Day era. I always liked her on the Hillbilly. She was always after Jethro. The and, Jethro, I, and Jethro wouldn't give her the time of day. I remember Nancy Colt was an episode of Chips called Roller Disco that we watched on 16 millimeter film. Remember when the film fell all the floor of your projector? I wasn't watching the reel carefully, and the film just went flying off the yeah, reel. Well, anyway, let's hear what he let's hear what, yeah, he, let's says, hear let's hear what he says about Nancy Colt. And, Nancy uh, Colt, yes. Mil- Favorite episodes? They usually pick the Indians are coming as the show's best. 
The story shows off every member of the cast at his or her best and features a cameo appearance by one of Hollywood's engine fighters. In the Sheik, the Clampets meet up with an Arabian oil baron, 240 wives, and the strangest horse I've ever seen. What results is a classic Beverly Hillbillies mistake leads to another and another until the whole. Hey, yeah, let's, he, let's... he sounds like he's taking drama mean or something. Yeah. He you interrupted him. Let's cut it before I said about the clip because I, I thought I had it cued where it because he's well, talking. That was kind of interesting. No, but he's though. talking about nonsense. We don't know anything uh, about. I kind of like what he's talking about. The favorite. Yeah. Yeah, All know. right. Let it play. We'll shut chance up. Going wild. This episode also shows off the comedic talents of Raymond Bailey. Do anything well, for a buck banker, Milburn Drysdale, and Nancy Culp as Miss Jean Hathaway, the Commerce Bank's most secretary. In one upcoming scene, Jethro aspires to be master of his own. How many of Jethro's other career choices can you name? I don't think we can name very many of them at all. Performance. Yeah, let's get a paid spot out of it. There you go. No, we're recording. He didn't stop. Continue. Oh, I let's talk about the spinoffs this before we get. All right. What was the character? And we talked about this before we rolled when we were eating. We haven't finished with the hillbillies yet. We're well, not. I'm well, talking about the hillbillies here. Who's the character? There was a woman, like an aunt. She wasn't as backward as the hillbillies. She was well, in the that, main well, cast. That was B. Benadere. Thank you. And she played Cousin Pearl. Cousin Pearl. And she was uh, Jethro's mama. Yeah. Like on the, the show. And she was the one that talked the Clampets into moving to Beverly Hills. Want to go to Beverly Hills? If you, if you watch the first couple of episodes, they care less about going to the big city. No, Granny but, would sit on the porch and oh, be yeah, protest. Yeah. She would haul Granny off in the truck, and she's still she's sitting on top of all the stuff piled on top of the truck, and she's sitting there still rocking in a rocking chair. And uh, you know, you know, it never really said in the show how far away they actually lived from Beverly Hills, but you know, made you think it was quite the distance. And they went back and visited the old log cabin many times. And eventually they finally wised up because Granny was so upset about moving to Beverly Hills. They moved her cabin to Beverly Hills and put it in the, in the back of the uh, mansion. Of course, you know, not really, but on TV it was. Happy. It cured her homesickness. But um, but the show, as, as, uh, as you heard, Buddy, it stayed in the top. I mean, the entire run, which obviously spawned spinoffs. You know, the house in Beverly Hills that they used, real house. And it just went on the market. It, it just went on the market. <laughs> yeah, that's for we sure. We are in psychic tune because I was just looking up an article about that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it went for, and they had tours, didn't they? Like, it like South Fork out in Texas for Dallas. They Don't they Yeah, but, tours? but of course, just, just like the Brady. Looks nothing like it did on the inside. No, of the Hollywood set. no, but and it so, got remodeled. So they, yeah, and then they right remodeled right. the stupid thing. Well, they built sets for the. Actually, yeah, did, they, they actually did. They actually did use thing. the interior of the house. They just used the front of it. Yeah, because right. the inside exactly. was Paramount Studios. Yes. Yeah. On a so and and they did that with everything. They did that with pretty much any and everything. Whenever you saw somebody go through a front door, chances are that has oh another pun, that the chances are it really exist in that state. Uh, there may, obviously there is, there's going to be a few exceptions here and there, but, but, uh, they, they shot so many outside shots <laughs> of it. It's not even funny. And I think it's going for like 295 million. Well, oh, really? That much? That, it says Beverly Hillbillies mansion could be yours for 195 million. That's, That's a YouTube all. video. Actually wow. it's from inside edition mm -hmm. and someone put on YouTube. Oh, so you know, it's true. uh, and there's a, and if you go to YouTube, look up Beverly Hillbillies mansion inside and out, it gives you a tour <laughs> right there on YouTube. Yeah. I just looked up Beverly Hillbillies Mansion on Google, and you see a list of videos. All right. Well, anyway, we, I, we've spent a lot of time on Beverly. We've played a few clips, and that's but great. I, but I, we're trying to segue here, because well, Pearl, I want to talk about. On... No. Please do. Go ahead. Well, we, 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 we had talked about Mr. Drysdale. We, well, haven't, we haven't talked about his wife, who I really like. Well, again, well, Special about the wife, and was she seen that frequently, or was she kind of a rare? Well, she was so hoardy, hoardy. She hated the Beverly, you know, she hated them. <laughs> she thought they were just vagabonds. That's kind of like how we felt back at the old station. Yeah. A little inside baseball. I see. Jim 
Tell me. It's Mrs. Drysdale. I know it's Mrs. Drysdale. What's her real name? I can look it up, but you've got, you, it, you've got the I, computer right there. Mercy, again, right. you weren't listening. Mm-hmm. You weren't listening. The problem is, I've no, got, I was listening, but I forgot. But no, 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 we, that's, we that's hadn't okay. talked about. It. Ladies and gentlemen, but the, but the problem is, I pulled up the next show, and I don't have that information. Is, is, her name was Gibbons, uh, Mary, Mick Mick Gibbon. Mick Gibbon was her last. Well, name. if your buddy will call you us, didn't, he knows all about this yeah, stuff. He, does. he, he didn't have he, any he, clips of her. Text him. <laughs> Why? Pull because I thought we were just going to talk about the main characters because if we talk about every character well, on the show, we're we'll be here time. for five hours. <laughs> two hours? We got to stop. Yeah, we can respect too much time on the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, there's so um, many clips. Anyway, any, anyway, she, Milburn's uh, crazy wife who hated the Hillbillies living next door, of course. And she had her French poodles and Ellen would, would mix them with... Uh, they're bloodhounds and stuff, and and she was aghast by that that type of stuff. And and uh, yeah, well, the right. guy that played Dr- Mr. Mr. Word, uh, right Mr. Drysdale, did he go on to do on the, on the Lucy show? No, no, if you're thinking of Mr. No. Mooney. He was, like a, I, he was on no. the Danny Thomas show before that. That's right. Back. Yeah, but but all these all these the all these characters were. Uh, the, the main characters, like I said before, there was a ton of people on the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, from New, Louis Nye on down to, <laughs> to Frank Caddy and all these other characters that migrated over into you know the Petticoat Junction, migrated over to you'll see them on Green Acres, you'll see them, you'll see a mishmash of of, of, of episodes where they join forces on on an episode. You'll see uh, uh, them show up together on the same episodes, which I thought was going to do back then. Uh, but they wouldn't have done that if they were on different networks. That would not have happened. Yeah, all this was on CBS. Yes. And the reason that they could uh, get away with that so easily. And it works so well because they it, it all gelled when they did write the write the write write them up together. Like did that. the other networks counter-program to that? Did they come up with, with you know? Yeah. Well, fun, funny you should say that because they they had other variety shows like Phyllis Diller had a show on at the same time, uh, so there were other shows. For, uh, they I don't recall them trying any quote unquote corn pone humor or, or or whatever you want to call it, doing that. I don't recall any shows on NBC or ABC that that as you say countered that. The, the exception to that rule would be. Leaders. That you know, they they did that to, to counter each other, and same with the secret agent shows, whether it's the Avengers, the Avengers on ABC, of course, the Avengers were, were uh, a, a British property at the time, so they they did do that. They ever did any uh, uh any hillbilly humor on the other networks like that, except with the exception of the Jimmy Dean show. That was, uh, I'm not mistaken, that was ABC. Flash forward to the 80s and late 70s, and you had Lo- The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, which was a spinoff on Larson show. Wasn't terribly good, but there were some good episodes amongst the junk. And then you had Dukes of Hazard, which was kind of rural. I, yeah. I would say comedy. Friday, by the well, way, that was on CBS too. Ladies and gentlemen, read my mind again. I'm a little bit younger than you guys. Friday nights on used to be growing up. You had Dukes of Hazard, then The Incredible Hulk, and then Dallas. So and that was a solid lineup. Topped huh. the ratings for years. Sure Enough was. said. Sure was. Sure it was. Absolutely. Uh, Judy the Chimpanzee was on the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. But, but anyway. Tell uh, us how Pearl, the, where the, she wound well, the up late, well, the, wait, wait, wait. when you're ready. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, Mrs. Drysdale's name was Harriet E. Mickey Gibbon, which I did mention earlier in this pod blast. Um, she was uh, Mrs. Margaret Drysdale. She was only in 55 episodes out of 200. Yeah, uh, yeah she, was, she was very funny. She was very funny. And here's the funny thing. Um, Linda Henning. Jeffreen Bodine. And she was in 16 episodes. I wonder who she was. Linda Henning. Anyway. There's no nepotism there. And here's another thing that you probably didn't know. Sharon Tate was in the Beverly Hills. Oh, my God. Charles Manson yeah. in the, in the she tribe. Was, she was in 15 episodes. No fooling. 15 episodes. That's, that's 
were. Uh, who was married to? Maybe she. Ma- maybe death. she played Jelly May's co- she, May's cousin. She was married to someone who is now exiled from the USA. Thank you. Yeah. Lolita. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, so she. I want to say Sharon Tate. She. She. She was either Lester Flatts or Earl Scruggs. She played their. Uh, their wives. The two. The two. Uh, really. As they called them. Uh, who was married to Lester and Earl in the show. She was one of those ladies, if I'm not mistaken. I should look that up. But she, no, I am wrong. I am wrong. She played Janet um, uh, Trago. She was uh, great. She played Janet Tra- Trago and Mary and, uh, and then a young woman, uh, Jethro, her, she didn't look nothing like herself here in this picture I'm looking at. But so anyway, she was in uh, she was in the show, oddly enough. I, did, I had no idea. As far as are you aware of? Oh, Sharon well, Tate, that blows my mind. I'll have to go back and look at that. She was beautiful. Oh, yeah. And it's terrible yeah. what happened to her when the Manson clan. Horrible. Uh, pregnant. Uh, she true. was pregnant. Well, Phil Silvers, ah. Phil Silvers was in there. He played Honest John, and he was in six episodes. Yeah, Phil Silver. I never liked him. Well, you know, Sergeant Bilko, right? Yeah, of course. Now I said Louis Nye, of course. He played Sonny Drysdale, which was Milburn's son, <laughs> and he he was the he was the you know I'm the Hollywood guy, you know, and he wanted to date uh, 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 the, Ellie May, and so and Ellie May, uh, the clip we played a minute ago, he he she decked him and laid him out on the floor. You guys have me at a disadvantage because I have a book at home. It's published in 1988, and it's alphabetical. It's a complete history of television, and it shows the schedule, the competition, what won an Emmy. I mean, it's got yeah. so much information. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to find shame on me. That's great. Yeah. We're going to take next week off, but when we resume in studio, I'll have that book with me for well, reference. Right, we need to move on, too. Uh, so, well, we're we're we need to go to the Green Acres. Well, wait a minute. Well, you're the one that wanted us to. That. You're the one that wanted us to keep going we're, about Beverly Hills. Well, I'm not finished now. I'm on a roll. We're, we're Alan, going, Reed. All right. Alan, Alan Reed. Reed. Chance, will you kind of be quiet? I'm going to kill your mic. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Clark, uh, Louis Nye. Uh, again, the uh, the uh, the list goes on and on and on. Lyle Talbot. Uh, he was an old. Um, that that came back on the show, and there's a Roy Clark, like I said earlier, Edgar Buchanan, who obviously played. Um, uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other notables. I don't, but, but the kids, kids out there, preacher was on the show. Um, Alan Reed, um, Soupy Sales was on the show. So I don't remember Soupy Alan Sales. Alan Reed is no. I, I didn't. I didn't remember. Um, uh, him being on the show, but obviously he was. He was in two episodes. So, um, so anyway, there, these shows again. Paul Henning's vehicle, and he and he went on to write other shows and of this genre into into the world. And one of the other ones was uh, Petticoat Junction, which had B. Benaderet on. Take her character from that. That was the interesting part, though. She did not take her character. From uh, oh now marks available. I love, Good. I love that song. Do you have do you have, do you yeah. have the, uh, the the petticoat junction? Thing? Yeah, I do. But hang on, a minute. let me let me finish it, talking about B. Benaderet. Uh, here's the funny here's the funny and sad thing about B. Benaderet. Uh, she didn't last but so long on the show. But well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, her character did not transpose from the Beverly Hillbillies over to that show. She played um, another character totally. So, different her voice stayed the same um but she she owned uh petticoat junction the hotel called the shady rest hey i found something guys in the first season 1962 63 beverly hillbillies was on wednesday night at nine opposite perry como's craft music hall there you go and opposite and that was on nbc and then on abc they had a show called going my way opposite beverly hillbillies which was an hour-long show and then after Beverly Hillbillies was the Dick Van Dyke and, show, and that, and that was a, that was a short-lived show. It had Dick York in it. He ah. he played yeah he played in, he played in the show. Dick York and Gene Kelly was the Bing Crosby. Going my way, he played the uh, the priest. Yeah, 
And uh, it was an hour, I know, it was an hour long show. And uh, that show did not let, I'm sorry, I'm looking at a text from some guy, guy named Mark. Did you ever see uh, Going My Way? I had a couple of those prints. At one time. Mm. They weren't, they weren't shows but there were our shows and an hour mm. show you really got to be entertained to hold, to hold how many untouchables do you have i had the whole set on dvd no i'm not okay i'm, not, I'm talking film 16 millimeter yeah about 10 episodes okay so how many of those episodes pitch in the entire hour well i'm biased i like the show yeah okay there you go the one with liz montgomery held my attention when she played a tramp oh. to premiere of the untouchables of course of course but, 1960. But anyway, let's let's uh, let's give a list. Well, well, you know, let's a mob. Um, <laughs> is that what it was? A mob trip? Mob well, tramp. Well, at least you didn't say a mob hit. But this is what the theme song from Petticoat Jones. 53 to 70. Woo woo. Come. That is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to Lots of curves, you bet And even more when you get to the junction Petticoat Junction Here it comes They're naked There's a little hold Pity rest at the junction and Here she comes, be better there Petticoat it is run by Kate. Come and be her guest. And Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat. So there it is. Petticoat Junction. That's a great theme song. That was a great theme song. Now here's the sad thing. A little while ago, when she passed away uh, from cancer, uh, they not had good. Yeah, not good. Unfortunately, they changed theme song. <laughs> what? So yeah, they changed the theme song just a little bit. And do you have that other version? Oh, well, of course I do. I'm trying to get allude to was they said, well, okay, now what do we do? Do we, uh, uh, what do we do about Kate? Cause in the, in the show. So, so here's what they did. Oh, oh saw, I thought I had it queued there. Oh, there you go. Ready? Here. Come ride the little train. Quality's not quite as good as the other one. The listen to how they change the words. The shots are pretty much the same. Time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Some of the daughters have changed. Ooh. To the junction. All right, here's where, here's where the change comes. Little hotel called a shady rest at the junction. All right, so the, 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 they didn't they didn't uh, change it like I thought. It's the same to it, me. It is the same. That's because hey. they uh, for somehow some way they didn't uh, this played the same one. Oh, here here it is. Here oh, I apologize, everybody. Listen to this. This is where it changes. Sorry. To the little hotel called the Shady Rest at the Junction. Here's the change. It's a real friend. Our guest at the Junction. No more cake. There's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the Junction. Petticoat Junction. Well, that's very different. So yeah, so they they they, they yeah. Well, of course. It's well, they said different. Petticoat Junction. Well, and, more than once. Yeah, they changed the the theme around, but they they kept the. See, I didn't all know the she shots. left the show. Pearl. What? She died. She died. Okay, yeah. You yeah that's why. That. Right. <laughs> she couldn't come back. She went to heaven or wherever. <laughs> she went yeah. to heaven. Yeah. So so Uncle Joe took over the hotel, and yeah. of course, uh, 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 not a good businessman, and 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 even even. Uh, uh, I see Meredith McCray was one of the daughters. Uh, I love Meredith McCray. Yeah. She was on My Three Sons before this. And she and Robbie she died uh, rather early she as well. She married Mike on My Three Sons. That's when they married off Mike when yeah. it went to color. And that... Anyway. Yeah, I mean. Pod blasting off into space well, again well, over here. Well, exactly. And, and that's that's the sad part about uh, uh, character. But you know who joined Petticoat Junction also in the later seasons? Tell us. She was in Lassie. And right after Lost in Space was canceled, 
Gene Robinson. She joined mm. immediately right out of the gate after Lost Space joined Petticoat Junction. June Lockhart, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Wow. America's mom. Mom. Go figure. John Lassie. Yeah, Linda. Now, here's here's another thing. Linda K. Henning was Bobby Joe. Jim, one who, who she was. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like, okay, well, let's, uh, let's see how that really works. Um, they did, uh, let's see, how many episodes did they do? They did 222 episodes. That that ran a little bit. Yeah, almost as much as 60, from 63 to 70, that show lasted. And that show really went off the, went off the rails, no pun intended. I mean, they had babies on the show. The daughters had babies, and then the babies were part of the show. They, they, they did all kinds of crazy stuff, but, but Paul. He's the one that, uh, that that did the show. I mean, that's that's just the way. It had a ton of writers. And oh it started gosh. during the second season. September, talking about uh, Petticoat Junction, it started September 24, 63, and there were 222, like Room 222. Episodes. Folks, we have a we'll contest. We'll talk about that at the end. We have a contest um, I want to mention real quick. On our Facebook page, it's Nostalgic Pod Blast. One word. I have a set a series set of room 222 and the winner will be the 222nd person to like our new page on Facebook. And we're gaining Woo! that number. So whoever hits that will get a free DVD set of room 222 and enough set on that. And a signed autograph picture of, of Al Hardy. So anyway, <laughs> oh, will you be willing to, to sign, to sign that, to uh, sign it anyway, to make a lot of Paul Henning's daughter course he wasn't married to her of course it was his daughter she played betty joe um uh Anders played bobby joe brady um linda henning of course was betty joe is betty joe bobby joe and uh billy joe was played by meredith mccray now she's the one um she's the one that died. earlier she was born in 44 and and uh she when did she die she, she was beautiful she, she had uh, uh uh 2000 year 2056 that's when she died and she, i'm pretty sure she died of cancer I'm and, sure and what i like she did games back the cast of petticoat junction they had a two-week series of shows in 1983 yeah. tv's all-time great so you yeah. have lost in space Gilligan's island Petticoat Junction, Hawaiian Eye, and a lot of other shows. Leave it to Beaver. It was a great week of television, and I'm glad that there's there's these retro game show networks. And in years past, the game show network, GSM, oh, that sure. would air those. They're fun to see. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, and, when they were alive, you know. Yeah, and she died. Billy Burnett, which was a, which was a big, he was a big um, uh, cowboy in the cowboy movies, wasn't he, Al? Smiley. He was, play, he was with um, Gene Autry. Yeah. Well, well, that was, and that was also um, Pat Bruntram was with uh, Autry as well. And he oh, played yeah. Mr. He's Haney. a funny guy. He's Pat a funny guy. Butt Ram. No, Butt but Ram. I know, but it's on paper. It looks like yeah, B U T T R A M. Yeah. Butt Ram. June um, uh, Lockhart, as you said, she yeah. she did uh, 40, uh, 45 episodes in the, starting in sixty eight to seventy. That right was, when after that was the show's later uh, later stuff, and she played Doctor uh, Janet Craig. And uh, so she she was good. On the show. She was, um, when I met her, this was quite a few years ago. She was a really really sweet lady. She still looked beautiful. And she's alive. Yeah, she is. But she's blind. She's almost it's almost oh, like Don Knotts. Did she have diabetes or something? Yeah, or something. Oh, uh, cataract. I I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure what it was. Cataract. You have surgery. You fix, all I yeah. all I know is she was fairly legally oh, blind. Man. I mean, she could still see. Don't get me wrong. That I think would, she still can. But, but I'm just saying, her and uh, Don Knotts was the same way. He 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 had really really bad eyesight as well. He could still see. Don't I'm gonna get hold me wrong. up a picture for Facebook Live. Speaking of Don Knotts, of Al Hardy, our own Al Hardy with Don Knotts. Let me hold yeah, that up. Yeah. Turner. We did what Live. we did. We did an Andy Griffith reunion, and uh, uh, Andy Griffith would not come, but Don Knotts was gracious to be there. Yeah. And, and of course, the crossover uh, characters, you know, uh, Eddie Albert and of course, uh, Fred Ziffel, played by the great. Uh, and um, so uh, and Lisa Douglas was on the crossover episode. She was on the show as well, you know, here and there. She was on 10 episodes. Um, and uh, uh, so, so there was, 
again, the crossover stuff, Rosemary DeCamp was on it. I remember she uh, back in the uh, 60s and 70s, um, which if you saw her, you'd recognize her. Tom Lester, he played Eb Dog from Green Acres. And, um, but the, the, show, the show itself was a very amusing show. It was a 30-minute show, of course. It had so, again, I'm sitting here looking at the list of people in this. And Frank Duvall. Not Frank, uh, music. Yeah, well, well, he didn't do the music for that show, but he did. He, he was a musician. He did music. He played Reverend Barton on the show in three episodes. Hal Smith, the great Hal Smith. I met him. He was a, he's a wonderful man. He played Otis the Drunk, but he didn't play Otis the Drunk. <laughs> In in this uh, in this series, he played a character Ben Miller, and he was on three episodes as well. So the show, as and Bert, Bert Mustin, who who's from Georgia, yes, he was in everything, yes. I, even Outer Limits. Yeah, I, I think he was born looking old. Yeah. <laughs> look he up, was on Johnny. Car- he always yeah. looked like he's a hundred years yeah, old. Yeah, he does. Yeah, look up Bert <coughs> Munston. Spell Mun- that, would you, please? Munston. That's important. He was a great yeah. character. And then Mustin, M U S T I N. He played, of course, Grandpa Jensen, but he was he was a fantastic um, uh, character actor. Of course, Pat Buttram, he played Mr. Haney. Pat he was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, Pat Buttram, he made the Green Acre show. He had a voice. You got to play. A clip oh of that yeah. Weird voice. Oh, we will. Oh, we yeah. will. But uh, but he 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 made uh, that show. And whenever he appeared on any of these other shows, he played the same character. Of course. Man, you guys hate Fall Guy, but all these guys guest starred on Fall Guy, like, and they wrote them. So well, like Pat Buttram, he was on a Western show with yeah. Roy Rogers. Anyway, I won't. Because, I, well, because he, I know, stay because focused he, was, he was a sidekick of all those Westerns from the 40s and 50s. Pat Buttram was. Called Happy and so, Trails, and yeah. so was Smiley Burnett. Smiley Bur- Burnett, a poetry film uh, at home. I forget the name of it, sorry. Uh, where he was, a, he was the sidekick. And uh, great. He was great in it. But he, he plays one of the conductors. Uh, uh, on the train, you know, uh, guys, uh, th- what's going on in the studio? We've gone one hour and 18 minutes, so he's getting nervous. He likes to wrap things up. Within, so, what I think we minutes. might need to start talking about Petticoat Junction, which wasn't we got to hear that theme, unless you want to oh, continue. We, you we, have some more, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there if you'll be quiet. Junction the theme. If you recall, I'm, I'm talking about Green ago. Acres thing. Oh, but you said Petticoat Junction. <laughs> I probably did because Al's got you a did. note in my face. But, in, but anyway, I, <laughs> I, yeah. Let's uh, let's play a clip from uh, Petticoat Junction real quick. No, Petticoat okay. Junction. Petticoat We're still Junction. talking about Petticoat Junction. Cut, wants, cut, cut, cut it out. You're going to have to cut it. I got I to pull the clip. Okay. Your friend on the phone, we got to get yeah, him on. You no, know, we, we got, can't. He just he texted you. Yeah, though, it was too late. I mean, no, it's not. Late. No, it's guys. We got. I said in the beginning. Of the show, no. a minute of it. Why, why don't but, we? But, but everything is subject to change. It's not. It's not. Anything. Well, Danny's calling it's for sure right. for the it's correction right. corner at the end. So just hold on a minute. I, I'm kind of upset. I want his friend to get on here. Petticoat Junction. Okay. Uh, God dang it. it. I hope. Yeah, we're stopped. All right. Uh, Close. And then cut me out saying, "You mean Green Acres?" Because I, I was, I wasn't paying attention. And- I, I, yeah. Let's uh, let's play a clip from uh, Petticoat Junction. Yeah, Petticoat Junction. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, yeah. Let's uh, let's play a clip from uh, Petticoat Junction, real. Quick. I bet you're that big Hollywood producer. That's right, sweetheart. 
Oh, you're looking at my Shirley Temple sign. James. And lose all that interest? <laughs> well, just put the bank away when you're through. Thank you, Mr. Drucker. Okay. All right, we're back. All right, you ready? My mic's on. Huh? I, I can't hear myself in my mic. I can't hear you either. Eddie. Yeah, I don't hear myself. Either. I don't either. His his mic isn't working. There you go. One, two. One. There you go. Yeah. Now you go. You got you got to butt this together. Oh, it's a yeah. Pretty yeah. Conjunction. yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Anytime. No. Now let me before before we play the clip. Hang on, I got to stop myself. Several episodes that I was talking about earlier. This is a perfect clip. It may go just a little longer than like a one minute thing, but this has got the Beverly Hillbilly Petticoat Junction and it's got Green Acres. See if you can identify. Yeah, see if you can identify this first character. I'm going to see him in a minute, but he's going to be talking to Tom Lester, who was Eb. And Eb is at Frank Candy's. Uh, he's, in, he's in Hooterville at the store. Let's listen to this. And it's a Thanksgiving. By the way, it's a Thanksgiving show. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hey, I'll bet you're that big Hollywood producer. That's right, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Oh, you're looking at my Shirley Temple side. <laughs> now, I'm Sam Drucker? That's close. Try again. <laughs> Who are you? Rock Hudson. You wouldn't pull my leg. Let me help you line up that talent. How about it? You got any dolls? No, sir. You're looking at my Shirley Temple side again. <laughs> I knew out here, Ed. Oh, you must be Mr. Bodine, a big Hollywood producer director. Jeff Just call me Star Maker. Great honor and pleasure to meet you. Leave here, sweetheart. Leave here. <laughs> hey, Mr. Drucker. You got a Shirley Temple side, too. <laughs> Around to light my cigars and such, you know? Can I be your flunky? I got matches. Yeah, maybe. No, why don't you go on outside and keep your eye on the hubcaps? That one car stripped today. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Bodine. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so basically, Jethro Bodine is now. And, um, and, he's, and, and here comes uh, the Clampets. And they're at the Shady Rest Hotel. Same different characters again at Petticoat Junction, Beverly Hillbillies, Mishmash. Here comes Ellie Mae. Running the hotel today. That turkey is looking real good. I hope Billy and Bobby hurries home with the trim. Jeff and Bobby said fetch him in the car. I'll have. You're awful cute. I see. They think that Ellie's talking to a handsome young. Man. She's talking to the dog from the Petco Junction show. Sure Sounds like she's found a boy, all right. How bad if I help you run this hotel? It's Uncle Joe. He's out in the kitchen. Oh, that's right. I like you. I'm going to give you a great big hug. <laughs> I want to kiss. At least doing her part. That's real sweet. I'd like to take you home with me. Go, Ellie, go. Here, let me brush the hair out of your eyes so you can see. Brush the hair? Must be a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that, that again, across, you'd have to. Again. And Ellie Mae looks cute as a button. Uh, what are those gloves called that go up to your elbow? I call them Tada Girl gloves. Like, like, like glamorous ball gloves. I don't know what. You 
looks like a total doll. Exactly. I'm in the dark over here. I can't see a damn thing. Oh, well, well it's all on YouTube and DVD. Thanks yes. to CBS Paramount. So, so uh, is, is, is in this next uh, I can take your clip. $80 million. I can run it into a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds. But there is a banker in Beverly Hills that handles all my business. Oh, that's too bad. I could have made you a rich man. <laughs> And here's Mil uh, now they're back at the Beverly Hillbilly set. Milburn Drowsdale uh, got the old Model T. <laughs> so anyway, it's a mishmash episode of, 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 of it's called Beverly Hillbillies, season seven, episode ten, the Thanksgiving Spirit. I, we don't have time to play the whole clip. I just wanted to give you. The yeah, it's it's a good show. And, and this is pretty good quality on on YouTube if you want to look it up yourself. And, and um, I was looking for more for, B but we're we're starting to run out of time. But B Benaderet is uh, is. Oh no, we we can go two hours. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, we're over, not going to go two hours. Just, we'll go is, two hours is on her own uh, accord as being a great actress of, of of that genre back then during that time. She worked a lot. I'm African surprised she even had time to get cancer. God bless her. Uh, so anyway, that leads us to another show, which was, uh, of course, uh, which we haven't had a chance to really uh, get into that, that much. The Green, Green Acres show is, um, again, it had a ton of actors. Eddie Albert, Ava Gabor, Tom Lester, Pat Buttram, Frank Candy, um, Arnold the Pig, who, who, was played, who played Arnold Ziffel on the show. Um, so that show had its own great, clever, clever theme song, which everyone remembers. And, and, um, Al, what do you, what do you, what do you best remember about that show that you like the best? I liked Arnold Ziffel and the Ziffels. They were hilarious. I thought, and of course, Pat Buttram. No, I like Pat Buttram better. Now what, what, come on. Who did he play? Who did he play? I have to look it up. <laughs> Great Cheers. radio, ladies and gentlemen. Haney. He played Mr. Haney. He was like a junk dealer that had all. He, I knew that. He tried to. He <laughs> tried to uh, just Oliver Oliver Douglas, uh, the weirdest crap. He would just try to sell. Him. Yeah, he just tried to sell him. He could come up with it was a piece of crap, and the tractor that he's driving in the open of the of the show. Uh, is is September fifteenth, nineteen sixty five, is when it debuted. Exactly. Great theme song. Well, let's, well, let's listen to the theme song yes. real quick. Why Great theme song. Yeah. Living is the life for me. Land spreading out to far and wide. Cheap man. New York is where I'd rather stay. I get allergic smelling hay. I just adore a penthouse view. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. The chores. The stores. Fresh air. Times Square. You are my wife. Goodbye, city life. Because we are there. I ranked that with the Beverly Hillbillies as a great opening. Now, was that Vic Mizzy? <laughs> I think so. Vic Mizzy? I, I, yeah, I think Let me so. Let look that up. I, I believe so. And that was uh, the guy that did Adam's family. Yeah. Now, now here's, a little, here's a little trivia for you, Al. You ready for this? Did you know that Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor are buried only yards apart at the famous Westwood Village that. Memorial Park? And I'll say I've been there, and and it's true. They're they're all, uh, only a, a little. Where, where's her, her sister buried? Ja -ja. Same place. Same place. Right beside, beside each other. Now and they're they're just a little ways away from uh, the Velvet Fog in Ultramé. Now there was a false rumor. Chance, did you ever hear this? Now there was a false rumor going around that the cast had a luau on the final day of of the filming. And that uh, Arnold the pig was eaten. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? Not, oh, not, gross. Yeah, I know. Like I know. I know. But that's but, a terrible that's story. That's okay. No, no, no. Listen to me. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, 
false rumors what I said. No one was listening again. That ruined my day. But you said hey. false rumor. <laughs> uh, years later, Lester admitted that he had made it up. Thank God. Okay, <laughs> because and you know why? Because he was he was just tired of people continuously. Uh, what had happened to Arnold? The pig. I want to think Arnold <laughs> passed away of old age. Well, sure, of course he was. Now, now, funny thing though. Remember to win an award for a performance at a sitcom. He won the coveted Patsy Award in 1967, given the performance by an animal, which is good because you think about it. If you if you watch the clips from of Arnold entering a room and carrying, and then uh, snorking on command, snorking on command, it was great. It was it was fantastic. You know that the. Uh, did you know there's censoring episodes of Green Acres now that are airing on MeTV and Antenna TV? They flip flop. They get the rights. There's there was an episode where they mentioned they say the word wetback, and that's oh. been censored oh by the, either the distributor. I don't know if just censoring it or I'm meeting, sure the MeTV, network did that, or it could be the distributor. I've seen nah, a lot of instances. I think they, they, they just send the shows out if they. Well, did you know Donna Michi was offered to par part of Oliver Wendell Douglas, but he turned it down. That'd have been a terrible role. I, I, you know, he, he might have been a because he was a great actor, but I I still think that the, they they picked the best person, Eddie Albert, for that. Absolutely for that role. And he had been in the yeah called Cry of Silence, nineteen sixty four to sixty five. So Eddie Albert, not a good with the tumbleweeds. Yeah, they were like alien tumbleweeds. For no. goodness sake, rotten episode. Ed, Eddie know. Albert made a lot of good movies too. Oh, he made a, he had an amazing, He's a great actor. Yeah, he had an amazing film career prior to this, and so did Ava, and 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 and, um, and so did take uh, this job and shove it. Classic. Well, yeah. Well, Hank <laughs> Patterson, Hank Patterson, who played Fred Ziffel, he was in his late seventies and almost completely deaf when the show began. Um, so what are you doing? What are those papers I'm here, I'm here. So he, in order, to, in order to keep him, unless you're going to do a Rush Limbaugh in person, like, okay, um, in order to keep him, scenes were shot, the dialogue coach would be lying on the floor, out of sight, and tap him on the leg with a yardstick to let him know. Where, that's how deaf he was, bless his heart. That's Fred Ziffel. At some point, I want to hear the Filmways tag from. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that in just a. Minute. I want to hear. This has been a Filmways presentation. I'll, put, I'll now, put I'll put that on the end of the show. Now here's here's a trivial thing. That, well, we have our hotel commercial, but it's that Al probably didn't know. Pat Buttram, don't say anything. Pat Buttram based his portrayal. Are you ready, Al? Of me on AKA Colonel Tom Parker. Elvis not yes. Elvis's <laughs> boss. <laughs> Whom he, he met him not. Parker was a carnival barker. That's what. Wow, that's what. That's what. Uh, Is that what Wikipedia is saying? Huh? No, Far out, yeah. man. Weird. Yeah, that's weird. But uh, that's that's what he based him on. That's that's what Pat Buttram. Yeah, but said. Colonel Tom Parker. He he wasn't. A, you know, you didn't see him in the media. No. He was on the sidelines taking Elvis's but, money. But again, he was a carnival barker before he hooked yeah, up with true. Elvis. So. There you go. <laughs> you might as well have been a car salesman or something like that. Um, so anyway, Oliver Wendell Douglas drove five gold series on the first three were Lincoln Continentals, the 65, the 66, and the 67. And then Oliver Wendell Douglas drove the three and four. And uh, so that, because Lincoln stopped making the Lincoln convertible, uh, another bizarre piece of trivia that's that's out there uh so anyway green acres um was one of cbs tv's eight sudden death victims from the extremely famous rule purge in 1971 you know why it, it, but archie bunker today, yeah. archie bunker and norman lear took television to a sophisticated level broke new ground yeah. and so People in the public and the network felt it was time to do away with these rural comedies. They'd run their course. They were not keeping up with the times and the mind of the executives. But I don't know how the ratings did. I need to look in my book, which I don't have today, to see if they really were by big wigs to do away with it because they thought... But they live on on syndication. TV. They've yeah, never they been off the yeah, air. They've yeah, never been...
they haven't. I mean, Hogan's Heroes replaced them, and you know, and uh, uh, Mayberry RFD in '68, and you know, Hee Haw was in '69, and uh, it's a shame. Fred, we we can thank Fred Silverman for all that. All, all in the family. <laughs> I want to say it debuted January twelfth, seventy one, so it was a replacement show that became a huge hit. So that jives with the ratings spiked for All in the Family. They were probably tailing for Green Acres, Beverly Hills. Petticoat. Well, so, well, what they say is at, at that wah, 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 at, wah. at the time, close analysis and the demographics came, and uh, of course, uh, these shows were perceived by a long time CBS executive Fred Silverman, as I said a minute ago, to only cool areas and the older generation. He's the an older idiot. people. Yeah, well, he yeah. ruined NBC too. Yeah. Anyway, so he decided to cancel them. Still, hugely popular. And still, uh, well, there you go. Bringing so in the asking, numbers. Didn't know the numbers were still strong. Yeah. Removed from the airwaves. <laughs> the the often told joke, which passed into legend, is CBS canceled every show with a tree in it. Wow. With, a tree, with a tree in it. That's 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 pretty funny. So anyway, um, that's that's kind of the the the. the, the, the uh, green, we got a call coming in. Green Acres, and uh, no. So anyway, that's that's about all we got hey, to say. Uh, I got I've got a call to our correction corner in a minute. Not now, but uh, is that all you got to say about Green Acres? That's it. Al says we have to wrap, so that's it. Oh okay. no. All right, well, I got a call coming in. Hang on, let me text Danny. You can stop tape if you want, and we'll we'll do the correction corner sound effect, and we'll have him on, and I'll let him know this got to be brief. Um, green, we got a call coming in. Green Acres, and uh, no. So anyway, that's that's about all we got. Hey, to say. I got I've got a call coming. Going to do our correction corner in a minute. Not now, but uh, is that all you got to say about Green Acres? Just think about it. Tree in it. That's 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 pretty funny. So anyway, um, from the airwaves. <laughs> passed into legend is CBS canceled every show with a tree in it. Just think about it. With, wow. a, tr with a tree in it. That's Removed from the airwaves. <laughs> the, the often told joke which passed into legend is CBS canceled every show with a tree in it. Wow. With, a tr with a tree in it. That's 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 pretty funny. Hang on. There we go. Yep, right here. Correction Corner! We have a live Ooh. Correction Corner with our caller. Dan Cochran is back, who was on our last Pod Blast 10 about comic books from the page to your TV to the silver screen. Hey, Danny! 
Hey, Paul Blast, how you doing? Good, good. Now, what do you have to correct from last week? Yeah, I want to hear that. I thought everything I said. You were real smart. I thought I was too. I thought you were too. <laughs> Come on, man. You give us I credibility. Feel like I'm really smart, but you know, sometimes in retrospect, you hear the information coming out of your own mouth. You you go, oh wait, I messed that up. But you gave us great credibility. Um, <laughs> continue. We don't have a lot of time. Go ahead. Well, the, the, the first correction, which was kind of funny, was, was off the bat after Chance was kind enough to uh, introduce me as the comic book expert. And the very first comic that he brought up was Action Comics number one. And we had like a little quick debate where he, he was like correctly uh, said the release date was uh, 1938. And, and I thought it was 1933. Oh. And of course, but in my head, I was like really wincing. There goes my comic book expert credibility that I don't <laughs> da, know da, the da. date of like the, the like biggest comic. Um, so I, I really had to sort of laugh about that. Hey, Danny, did you hear about the record auction for Marvel Comics number one for a million dollars last week? Anyway. Yeah, wow. they're, they're, they're getting up there now. You know, we have enough time. Um, it, it, and, on, and on this, I need, I need time to, like, to start queuing up his, like, music. <laughs> um, because, I, I, you know, I, I, I did a little bit more research on the angry course. girlfriend variant. Um, you know, and if there was, like, a couple of minutes, I, you know, I'd like to sort of uh, add detail. That might be important. Go ahead. Make it quick. Okay. Now, first of all, like it, it, correction corner, bum, bum, bum. Um, the two gentlemen that own the bum, 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 angry ex-girlfriend variant, um, I had stated it was a 1.5. And, and so I was saying they had a value of about four to $500. As it turns out, it is actually graded 1.8, which might not seem wow. like a whole lot of difference. However, a 1.8 valued at $650. And they want $100,000 um, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm getting there, Chance. I'm, I'm getting there. Once again, this is not a speculative value because anybody can own anything. And especially if you're emotionally attached to it, you can go, it's a million dollars. Um, the website that I get most of this information from is gocollect.com. And those sales of CGC graded, um, CGC is probably the top comic book grading company in the industry. Um, and so these numbers are based on actual sales. Wow. What these comics have actually, you know, to, for what somebody is willing to pay. Um, so the 1.8 comic is currently selling for six hundred and fifty dollars. No, that's the one that, that's um, defaced, or or the one that's not just defaced. not defaced. Gotcha. Actual value um, of one and graded one point eight of Amazing Spider-Man okay, fourteen. Gotcha. gotcha. First appearance right. Green Goblin nineteen sixty four. Exactly. Now, I have looked that the highest graded of this issue, um, in almost a year now, in the last eight, four copies of an eight point five. That has sold for five thousand five hundred dollars. That's that seems well, low. I know. I, I'm just I'm just saying that's what it's selling for. Um, beyond that, been eleven sales. This is total. This is CGC sales. Now these are online sales. Obviously, if they're you know if it's some um, at a comic book con, they can't track that. But these are online sales. But it gives you a really good picture for this. So they're in in their entire tracking history, okay, of online sales, Amazing Spider-Man number fourteen. There have been eleven sales of a graded nine point six. Wow! Now this is near perfect because the highest grade you can get is a ten. This is a nine point six, near perfect. Those are going for thirty six thousand dollars. <laughs> now, that, now that's a well, now that's a big jump. Yeah, it's a Let big you jump. Let you go eight point five.
a 1.1 jump. But what you have to realize is in these older comics, not many in a very high grade. Right. Makes right. sense. Yeah, because they were red. Red. Yeah. They were red. Some kid folded it up, put it in his back pocket. Sure. You know, and set his coffee cup well, on it. So the higher condition, the rarer that becomes. But this is a near perfect 11 sales documented. Okay. At a 9.6. At thirty six thousand dollars, and that's what it was so before it was, it was wrecked with the permanent. A nine point six, right. nine point seven. It well, was that's, gorgeous. Well, that's that's so, yeah, yeah, well, and, and I am but, going to touch on on yeah. that as well. Well, now, yeah, we got getting we, the we, signal we, for our yeah, engineer we, Al Hardy we, we that we're running out of time. Unfortunately, but Danny, Danny, we'll we'll call you back. We're not going to do a show next week. But we'll, is there anything else you wanted to say? Or is there a, a knockout punch at the end you wanted to real quick? Well, no, I, I really want to. I want to rename friend variant as two clowns in a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny, thank you so I much for calling. A, a, <laughs> two clown, two what, was it? Two clowns in a, in a two clowns. Two clowns in a comic book. That's fantastic. Now, and a, now Daniel, wait, chance, hold on. My name is Daniel Cochran, and I'm your comic book. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk That's to you good. soon, Danny. Thank Appreciate you. Bye, Danny. Oh, well, that's that's great. Al, I think a, a, a real quick, a real fitting closing uh, before, as we go off to the Beverly Hillbillies. It's pretty short, and it's uh, it pretty much says what we want to say. With the film ways? What Dang. I think, okay? Right. So let's fade it up. And we'll see you next time on what? Chance? The Nostalgic Pod Blast! Oh, One word, Pod Blast! Oh, Back next week for this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, dear. This has been a Filmways presentation. Ah! Well, we can edit in. Let's get the Ellie May. That's back it up. That's, that's not the one I wanted. We can get the Ellie May version. This has been a Filmways presentation. Have that one? Hang, on, hang on. Yeah, he'll find it. And then I have to Susan. Hey, I down. You got the call in. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. On, I didn't mean on, to. Hang on. Hang on a minute, guys. I didn't mean to be pushed. Play this out so I can hear it. For sure. You find it. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. This has been a film ways. It could be in a color one. Well, I said okay. closing theme song with Ellie May. Put, well, put color. This, I, I would put color. Way. The color episodes had that tag with okay, Donna Douglas. Okay, just yeah, I did film play logo. All, all right. right. And can, is there a way, maybe a post you could get? Or Evan, you want to be so the loaded up the truck in the middle of the like to have a heap and helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Perfect. Let's edit it in. Shoes off. Yeah. Now, back it up. And he's ready to go when you are. I'm ready. Be quiet. This has been a Filmways Clipped it. So. Nah. It, 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 yeah. Uh, well. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back. This has been a film waste presentation. I didn't fix that. That was perfect. That was perfect. Oh, you'll have to edit it, of course. One, two. We could do back to back, you know, and then that'd be kind of well, the Green cool. Acres, and then, and then Susan. The Green Acres doesn't have the closing see so y'all come back next week. Next week. Okay, okay. Theme. That's cool. I just love the Ava Gabor. Well, I do too. I like it too. This has been a Filmways presentation, darling. What? Hang on. I got another. Sure. Go ahead. Let me see who's watching on this. This has been a Filmways presentation. All right. I got it fixed. What else you got to do? Hang on. What? One last. Hang on. I got an idea. What else you got to do? I got an idea. Hang on. You don't want to end with that? Time. No, no, no. Just listen. Just listen. Just listen to me. Hang on. I, got I know. I do too. Action. No.
fucking both of them. You mean? Listen to me. <laughs> No, we don't need both of them. Present. So I'm gonna. Uh, at the at, at the. She says darling. I don't think she says darling. She does anymore. say darling. She does. So, Ellie May, and then and then we all say. And then there's Lisa. And then you hit that, and that's. Oh it. yes, yes, got it, got it. You don't think that's too much? No, no, no. No, it's just. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, don't forget Lisa. Okay, don't forget Lisa. Okay. Let Al say it. Yeah, Al can say it. All right, hang on. So you, you know what say, to do, Don't right? forget Lisa. So, what, what about Lisa? And, and Tom, you know don't for, Tom, Chance, don't forget Lisa. Tom and Chance, don't forget Lisa. This has been a film waste presentation, darling. Okay, that's good. Now we put Susan on. And that's it. Thing. Let me fix this. Good job, man. I'm glad we didn't kill each other this week. We didn't do it. <laughs> I almost got We're getting a little, no, this is the third or fourth show we've not really had a problem. That's great. Except she gets antsy about the time. It's like, well, I, I need, I need to reel myself in. Two on hours that. is too long for a podcast. <sighs> okay. <laughs> This has been a film waste presentation. Tom and Chance, don't forget Lisa. This sounds awesome, dude. Yeah. Good job, Tom. Mm -hmm. I wish we had your friend on. I'm really disappointed. Yeah, he was, he was extremely knowledgeable. He, he, and he's trying. He was making he, an effort to he reach was, you. Like, I know he was. But he, 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 reached yeah, me too, he reached me too late. He said 3 o'clock, and it was now after 4 o'clock. This has been a film waste presentation. Tom and Chance, don't forget. Presentation, darling. That's perfect. That's perfect. But now we put in Susan, right? Put it, then Guess throw in the Susan. Pod. That's it. Guests of the pod last day. Yeah. Well, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I got your Guest of the nostalgic pod blast stay at the beautifully remodeled budget. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Come by and visit Rock City. This has been a film waste presentation. Tom and Chance, don't forget Lisa. This has been a film waste presentation. Tom and Chance, don't forget Lisa. This has been a film waste presentation, darling. Guest of the nostalgic pod blast, stay at the beautifully remodeled budget hotel in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. Come by and visit Rock City. Tom and Chance, don't forget Lisa. This has been a film. Pod Bless, stay at the beautifully remodeled budget hotel in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. Come by and visit Rock City.
Hey, hey, thanks for live a lot. A lot of people, and I want to say thanks for taking the time out on your Sunday to watch our show, and we'll be back in two weeks. We're off next week. Something to do at Six Flags Holiday in the Park, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks, and we're going to have a special guest. I'm just going to tease. We're going to have a special guest in two weeks. Again, fantastic. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We're thankful to have nice listeners like you, and next time, call in. We're going to give out our phone number. Oh, of course, I have nothing next Sunday. I could have been here. <laughs> hey, Al needs, you, Al, Al needs be, a break, right? Just, I mean, it'll just be the Tom Williams podcast. I'm, bur I'm burning <laughs> Al out. He needs a break from me. I love you, Chance, but I need a break. Yeah. All right, All right. kids. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay, have a good have a good day. Have Happy a good Thanksgiving. Evening, okay, bye -bye. Morning. Bye -bye.